Version 65 for Lethal Company just dropped for the game's one year anniversary, so I'm here to play it in a way that makes the most sense to me. The two changes to the game that caught my eye the most are the furniture changes and the hoarding bug event. Furniture can now increase your chances to get lower quota rolls, which can be especially helpful for people trying to make it onto the high quota leaderboards as a solo player. And the new hoarding bug event can make in-game spawns absolutely wild. So I'm going to use this opportunity to once again try to make it onto the experimentation only high quota leaderboard, which I've somehow struggled to get onto despite a handful of attempts. The main reason is because experimentation doesn't spawn a whole bunch of scrap to begin with, and depending on your quota rolls, it might be tough. But since I don't spend a lot of money on these runs anyway, I'm thinking about buying some furniture on this run that can help me out with that. And while a lot of people might not find experimentation that interesting, I think it can be, especially now with the new hoarding bug event. There is a 9% chance for this hoarding bug event to happen on any map, and if it does, it not only spawns in 8 hoarding bugs as soon as possible, but it also changes a moon's max indoor power level to 30 and equalizes the spawn chances of all possible entities across the board. So on experimentation, instead of playing with an indoor power level of 4, I would be playing with a power level of 30 and likely experiencing every possible enemy that experimentation has to offer. Because there are 33 max total spawns for experimentation, and since the cap is raised to 30, then all I have to do is kill 3 entities in order to have every possible enemy spawn in on one day. And if this happens, it's very likely that it will end my run, but in the best case scenario, I might be able to take advantage of the 10 nutcracker spawns on experimentation, and whether or not it's worth going for is a very reason why I'm doing this run today. There are a handful of other changes that came with version 65. If you want to learn more about them, then go watch Bread, Ocles, or Crew Inc's video about it. Or just stay tuned in since it'll probably come up during this run anyway. But that's all I have for the intro, so let's see if I can actually make it onto the solo experimentation leaderboard in version 65. Sleep is for the week. <laughs> and it is the week. It is a Tuesday. It is a fine Tuesday. It's a weekday, if you will. And I get to do one of my favorite things in the game. I get to keep, I get to go to experimentation a bunch of times over and over and over again. Experimentation is one of, is unironically one of my favorite experiences in the game. First day on the job. And that's because it it is a chill moon. Some people don't like experimentation because it's not chill. Some people don't like it because there's almost no loot. But those are precisely the reasons why I like it. You know, don't have to deal with too many enemies. It's actually just very possible to full clear it as a solo. And uh, sometimes chill, chill spawns, chill Landings are very good for yapping, and uh, I like yapping. What time is it right now? It is 9.21 in the morning, which for most people is actually pretty late in the morning. But considering the fact that I've been waking up between 3 and 6 p.m. lately, this is super, super early for me. But it's not like I'm tired. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be talking like this if I was. I also got the Celsius going a little bit early, figured I might as well. We got the double loot room set up here. Two of ten. We'll see if I can keep up this energy. I feel like it's not a sustainable level, but um, we're going to ride it until we can't. Is there a way to disable the elevator jingle? I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, even though like the rest of those tracks are uh, copyright, I'm hoping that the elevator jingles are short enough to where it won't matter if I use them. Yeah, so one of the things that was added in version 65 is a special elevator jingle in the mineshaft, and it was made by the same producer that did the Boombox, Boombox Song 5 and Disco Ball soundtracks, but I've had YouTube videos demonetized for using those tracks, which is why I'm slightly worried about the new elevator jingle. But since the jingles are like really short, I should be okay. Speaking of being okay, I don't know if I'll be okay with this thing spawning behind me. Is that a spider? Are we really doing this right now? What was that? It sounded like spider footsteps, but I guess it wasn't. Past midnight right now for me? That, not, that makes sense why <laughs> it might be might have been a while since the last stream, because I guess my normal 4 to 6 p.m. stream times would be like right in the morning for you. Okay. I got a thumper day one. Um... So... I'm getting haunted? Bruh. 
<laughs> this isn't even the hoarding bug event. What's going on? Okay, I looked on purpose. I looked on purpose because I couldn't believe the audacity of getting haunted on day one. On just raw spawns. So I said in the intro that, um, what's it called? I might reroll. <laughs> well, no, I think we can play it out because it'll be real funny if I get on the leaderboard with this kind of start. But I said in the intro that when you get the hoarding bug event, uh, all the entity spawns equalize, so you have an equal chance of getting literally any entity. But I don't have the hoarding bug event today. You know? So... That's just very unlucky. <laughs> if you just use fire exit, you probably won't have to interact with the elevator. I'm also trying to not interact with Mineshaft as much as possible. <laughs> um... I at least have one gig, like, in the future where I will have to deal with Mineshaft. And it's when I run it, ba run it back on the full clearing offense challenge with Alter Ego and Illusion. And I was the main, I was the main runner for that one. But I'm not too worried. Like, usually copyright stuff is fine so long as you use less than a certain amount of time of it at a time. That's why, like, a lot of videos you'll see that use copyrighted music will use, like, just a fraction of it. Like, for only a couple seconds at a time, because it's usually fine. Usually fine. So... And... So I'm not crazy worried about it, but it's just something that I'm... I have in mind, and the first thing that I think of... Yeah, 0.44% Ghost Girl. Um, they said, welcome back to Lethal Company, it, it seems. All bugs is now an 8% chance. Oh, I thought it was 9, I must have mixed it up with something else. But what is my least favorite moon? Um... Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you know, in the past, my, well, the answer probably would have just been adamant. But that's absolutely just a skill issue, considering that uh, most high quota runners and uh, even now, like the people who are pushing the solo high quota meta are pushing for adamants. So I think I just have to learn it a little bit. But I think it's still going to be Adamant's, actually. I was watching July by Day do her at duo Adamant's only runs with Bella Bean the other day. And I've been kind of following that and stuff. They love Adamant's, and the, but the few times that I've like tuned in, they're just getting absolutely um, Adamant's on, if you will. Obviously a playable moon, but damn, it can get stressful real fast, and it gets mine shafts. So, uh, yeah, I would say at least favorite moon is still Adamant's. Favorite moon has got to be, like, <laughs> experimentation or assurance. Which is why I try to play on them as much as possible. When will I do High Quota Val only with Nico? Um. Okay. We're just gonna go, I guess. I will do High Quota on Val only with Nico as soon as we're both available. It's probably going to be on a weekend, to be honest. Because Nico works a day job. And... He's not usually available for a lethal company until around 6 or 7 p.m. my time. And now that Forsaken Frontiers is fully out, um, I can't really be doing high quota runs that late. Okay, yeah. I can't really be doing high quota runs that late anymore because a lot of my time now has to go into editing uh, guides and videos for Forsaken Frontiers. Because, you know, I've been talking about that game for a long time and pushing it as hard as I can. And I'm still going to do that. There has been mixed reception for the game, which has been understandable. A lot of it was for the price point, which has been lowered since then. And a lot of people... And aside from like personal preferences with aesthetic and gameplay loops, there are also a lot of people who just don't really understand how to counter a lot of stuff in the game or just the f understand the basic fundamentals of the game. And that's where I'm hoping to come into play. Because there's, not, there's no tutorials or anything other than what people put out on YouTube, really. So I'm trying to be at the vanguard of that. And I think the sooner I do that, the better it will be for the lifespan of the game. Kind of through by not making my monster guide last or last night and having it up right now as we speak. But I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. So I'm st that's why I'm starting the day with this, because I, I, I still need to play Lethal Company in the meantime. And... The time to play Lethal Company is now, and then I'll probably spend the rest of the day editing and making sure that I got my YouTube content lined up all right. 
<laughs> Zeker's is happy you left and wants it to stay that way. Um, I can't make, well, if I were to make a decision to leave Lethal Company for the feelings of one person, it's not going to be Zeker's because there are a lot of people that would love it if I stayed with Lethal Company and I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. Not even with the release of Forsaken Frontiers. My plan is just to make both of them work and I... <laughs> Maybe he does want me to leave, huh? Lock the door. Oh man, I'm pulling an anther and not bringing a lockpicker to fire exit. Maybe lockpicker is the play on day one. <laughs> morning Lloyd, morning Lloyd, morning Sky. I just hate baboon hawks. I was also a baboon hawk hater until I watched Alter Ego's video and we got steam immediately. All right. Um, I still don't entirely like them all too much, but watching Alter Ego's baboon hawk AI video. Jesus, these are loud helped me immensely on how to deal with them and also you know using the high like the clipboard exploit that I learned from the high quota people that helps extremely with baboon hawks but that is also one of the reasons why I don't like adamants because even if you know how to deal with them you still get like infinitely many of them this 81 pickle jar do I have a single item day I don't think pickle jars are normally $81 let's go find another item it is a pickle jar only day okay I don't get lockers in here, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Forsaken Frontier is Zeker's new game. No, it's a completely different dev. Uh, so, I got invited to play in the playtest. Oh, there's a fire exit. I got invited to play in the playtest back in August. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it from day one. And have been using everything in my power to push it onto new people. I don't get paid to do this or anything. It's just like, it's more of like a passion thing of mine. You know, because ever since Lethal Company came out and I've started playing Lethal Company, I've been looking forward to the day that someone would take the Lethal Company formula and make make something interesting of their own. And it doesn't necessarily have to be better than Lethal Company, it just has to be good enough as a game to be in the, in the conversation. And uh, Forsaken Frontiers is the first one that I think is worthy enough to be in that conversation. There are a lot of, like, lethal-inspired video games out there that are just not good, and I think... The fact that a bunch of those have come out has kind of guided public perspective of games inspired by Lethal Company into a negative light. And I'm hoping that Forsaken Frontiers can be one of the ones that changes that. Also, thanks for the, su the prime sub, Levancle. Good to see you. Pickles only. Pickles only. This is already more loot than I would normally get on a regular experimentation. I think there's one more pickle jar back here. So, obviously I'm thrilled. There's 12 pickle jars here though, so we're gonna try to get a few more maybe. I also don't wanna like greed too hard because if a hoarding bug spawns in now and starts moving my pickles, then I'm gonna be in a bit of a pickle myself and I'm not trying to, you know, do all of that. Thankfully they give me this bracken room so I can just start working my way back towards the main entrance. A single item day even illegal on high quota absolutely it absolutely is <laughs> and it's kind of you know it's kind of what I'm looking for um, the only like the only change for I hear a hoarding bug step the only change for a high quota or as far as single item day goes is when you're trying to do a single day clears which isn't like a category that I'm all that invested in you have to note whether or not you did it on a single item day because the amount you get is like the max you can get is affected greatly by that. And also, I think uh, speed runs as well. Like if you try to do like if you do speed runs, you have to note if you had single item days, especially on the lower quote, lower quota ones. Okay, slime is kind of tough. Let's put these outside first. I think there's an apparatus room on this side, so I'm gonna go this way. Also, Sky, I saw that you got a person new personal best of like 513 on Metro, which is absolutely insane, actually. <laughs> so that's going to be a tough score to... Oh, God. I think that's going to be a tough score to beat, I think. So, uh, looking forward to see the race for that. There is a uh, Forsaken Frontiers speedrunning Discord and High Cycle Discord, which is what they're calling it. You know, I guess the official name isn't a debt quota. It's a debt cycle. So I'm going to try to run with that uh, naming convention. 
But now that you post that, I think like a like a single day uh category would be cool too. Okay, there's two slimes. What up? Oh god, I forgot. Okay, well that's all four spawns for today. Two slimes, a hoarding bug, and um a snare flea. But I think I'm good. Yeah, this is good enough. Like this is pretty fantastic. Five hundred plus eighty for the apparatus. Yeah, we're five hundred eighty day on experimentation. I think I'm set. Lucian, good morning, man. Welcome in. Or good afternoon, I suppose. Happy lunch hour for all the East Coast peeps here. <laughs> Super excited for more FF streams. Let's go. Same same as well, same as well. I especially want to push the solo meta for Forsaken Frontiers. Because right now there are a lot of people who are concerned about the viability for solo play in Forsaken Frontiers. But as someone who now has over 70 hours in the game, I can assure you that... Forsaken Frontiers is tuned enough for solo play, and it's all just a matter of learning the strategies. So, I mean, it was the same opinion when Lethal Company first came out. People thought Lethal Com solo Lethal Company was impossible, but then people like Thelonious like, pushed the envelope to the point where, uh, you know, people started thinking it was possible. And I give full credit to Thelonious for that. I was not the first solo Lethal Company player. It was something that I thought of very early on into my Lethal Company career, but... You know, my first ever solo run, which was my experimentation only run, I ripped that straight off of Thelonious. I saw Thelonious do it, and I'm like, hmm, I kind of want to do that also. I wasn't nearly anywhere as good at the game, but I thought it would be cool if there were two perspectives on this solo experimentation run. Because then you can, ha you can see how a pro like Thelonious performs in this kind of challenge run, and compare it to the average Joe, aka myself. And um, it's always, it was always funny doing the solo MacBook, a single moon runs back then. Because I would do one and Thelonious would do one. I wouldn't look at Thelonious' video until after I did mine. And Thelonious just cleared me every time. And you know what? That is still true to this day. Because even my my, ver my very first uh, high quota entrant or submission, which was a solo Val high quota, I thought I did pretty fantastic. I thought I did okay. And I did it in version 56 against the Kidnapper Fox. I was stoked. And then a couple weeks later, I see that Thelonious did it in version 64 and just absolutely cleared me. And I'm like, some things just don't change. And speaking of Thelonious, I saw that, saw that Thelonious made a community post saying that he will be coming back to Lethal Company every Sunday. So for people who are wondering about where Thelonious went, Thelonious is coming back. And for people who are newer to the Lethal Company and are unacquainted, go get acquainted. Thelonious is one of the best solo players out there. Very, very underrated and I think de deserves a lot of love. So shout out to Thelonious. It's kind of cool that he's coming up now in my head as I do an experimentation only run almost an entire year later. And as appropriate, we got an Eclipse experimentation at this time. But yeah. Good morning into fruit. What do we think of barbers? I like barbers. I could actually use one in real life. My hair is getting kind of crazy. But, you know, when my hair is crazy like this, it also kind of fills out the headband. It's just a little too much for my for my hat right now, so... That's why we're doing this. Good morning, afternoon, <laughs> or evening. Morning, afternooning. If you're here at night, the idea of single day high score more than cycle high score. Yeah, because of the reducing loot percentages. I feel it. I I can bring it up to the to the board or whatever, quote unquote, um, for the single day because I think that makes a lot of sense also. And then you can do a single day on all the different maps without worrying about earning enough to stay there. But there is, in a, there are official Iron Man categories already for Forsaken Frontiers, which I think is super cool. I'm gonna probably do those, uh, give those a go later this week. I mean, I've already tried the classic Iron Man format. I need to try the hardcore Iron Man, at least, you know, the speedrunning variant on it. Works the same way as Lethal Company. Um, turns out the speedrunners actually like the Iron Man format, and I'm very happy about that. Woke up and clicked stream. So awesome. <laughs> I'm glad. Welcome in. I saw you last night. Pretty much. And now we're here in the morning. Trying to be here as much as possible. What did what did Thelonious did? Thelonious just outperforms me in every so single solo category despite not being as active as I am. Which isn't exactly true. When Thelonious games, he games hard. Like it's always like an 8 hour, 10 hour session. Even when it's not Lethal Company. Thelonious is also in the same boat in trying to do more than just Lethal Company on their channel. 
and I respect it. We're all just trying to figure that out at this time. Variety isn't very conducive for YouTube or social media in general. It is what it is. But if there is a way, there is a path, I'm going to try to find it and kind of figure that out. I think Forsaken Frontiers has a good chance for doing that. All it needs is more people to know that it exists and start enjoying it. Welcome in, Jupiter. It is early. It is early. We're out here. There are people out there that thought Solo 10 Quota wasn't possible. I'm saying. I'm saying, Sheriff. And just because people don't believe something is possible doesn't mean that you should also, especially if you know that you can do it. You know, usually if everyone if everyone thinks something isn't like I, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson who said if they cannot prove that it is physically impossible to me, then I just have by default have to believe that it is possible. And, you know, that they said the same thing about like the sub four mile or something. I don't know. I'm trying to pull facts out of my head. But that's the difference between someone who will pioneer something and someone who will just follow afterwards, after it's been proven. Nothing wrong with following something after it's been proven, but there's, spe there's a special place for people who believe in something, regardless of what like the masses believe, and go and execute anyway. And those people tend to be like super successful in whatever it is they do. They also have to fail like thousands of times before they make that happen. It's just part of the gig. But if you like, if you fold because you fail, then I don't know. That's that's a bit of a life learning experience that has to happen first, I believe. Yeah, just because something is hard doesn't mean it's impossible. There's a big difference. Big difference. Um, how many play hours do I have? I have almost 500 hours in Lethal Company now, which is a lot less than I think people would think after you know doing Lethal Company YouTube for almost a year now, and doing this thing full time. Even though I have less views now, doesn't matter. Still making enough off of it to do this thing, and I'm very grateful for that. I can't say it's more than I was making in food, <laughs> but you know, it's kind of cool. I get, I make, I, I get to wake up and play video games and be here and with all you guys who enjoy what I do. So appreciate everyone who's still around. Lethal enemy. Oh, I for, I didn't even follow up on the lethal enemy barber. I actually like the barber in game also. I don't get him enough times to, you know, all that much. But it always makes me happy when he's there. Unless he's about to end my vow run, because he shouldn't even really be there in the first place, but it is what it is. Full cycle per map format seems like it'll be really hard on Forsaken Frontiers. Especially the tunnels part. That's something that I want to think about. And will probably allow the Pentagon because of that reason in general. Uh, please allow us to know, did you ever even sleep? I actually did sleep. I actually did sleep, somehow. I think I slept like 5 or 6 hours, which is kind of insane. But yeah. Being the first is how you make history, no matter how small I'm saying, I'm saying. So I'm going to be the first person to do <laughs> experimentation high quota on version 65. Or not. I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there who beat me to it. Version 65 did drop yesterday, so there has been a time, a window of time for someone to beat me to this. So let's like reduce that window by landing on Eclipse Experimentation now. Uh, we got nine objects. going to full clear it now. Um, if you guys... So something I do, and something that uh, you should get used to doing if you're doing high quota. Okay, I'll get the worm almost immediately. That's cool. At least it wasn't insta-pop. You know, the, the worm has been nerfed since, like, the early versions of Lethal Company to where it can't insta-pop on you. It'll take at least, like, one whole second before it does. And that's nice. I just ran entirely through that worm. So... <laughs> As someone who was recently playing on version 49 and dealing with them, it, I'm just very happy to see that kind of uh, worm interaction here. Need to practice my FF gameplay. Hard to keep up with me and Nico when, when you played. I mean, me and Nico and I have had the privilege of being able to... Uh, I wouldn't say refine, but at least practice our Forsaken Frontiers, you know, gameplay and strategies, which is a huge advantage that we have compared to people who only got access to the game w when it went live. Especially since there's not a crazy amount that has changed fundamentally from the playtest to the live release. So almost everything that we did in the playtest still applies now. But at the same time, you know, Nico and I are the kind of gamers that we are. We just aren't like crazy high performing people. I'd say we're definitely more content pilled than we are <laughs> gamer pilled. So our role, at least in my head, is to perform well enough to show people that high performance is possible in the formats that we choose. 
So that way it can encourage someone else to go and push the limits even harder than we can. One example of that is uh, Sky, who just who this morning just posted a personal best single day clear on or single day run on Metro of getting 500 and I think 13 uh, loot in one day, which is actually crazy. Like, because my average return on Metro is like when I'm not trying to push it crazy is around um, like 150, 200 or so. And like, I consider like 300 plus to be very good for Metro. So the fact that Sky got 500 plus is insane to me. So. So. I mean, but also Sky's also been here for almost all my Forsaken Frontier streams. We're, we're a bit tuned into like the approach of the game and maybe Sky figured something out that I haven't yet. But Sky did that solo, performing in Forsaken Frontier solo is absolutely possible, so if you don't want to take it from me, take it from Sky, who has performed even better than I have so far. Oh, my, my chat stopped scrolling. No time for lethal anymore, now that No Man's Sky dropped a new expansion and FF dropped the day before. <laughs> you know, it is about time though, that some games dropped that have caught our interest. I've literally just been waiting for a game to drop to catch my interest ever since Lethal Company came out. So, to an extent, I understand why a lot of people don't want to give Forsaken Frontiers that chance, or if they did, they went into it with the harsher lens of critique. Because Lethal Company is a fantastic game, so it's kind of, it's like hard to compete with. So, and it's not like a lot of the Lethal inspired games I've played so far are necessarily bad. It's just that they often tend to be not as tuned as Lethal Company is in its current state. And to an extent, that's still true about Forsaken Frontiers, you know? Forsaken Frontiers has been out for two days. <laughs> and, um... Lethal Company is, go is going to be a more polished game at this time. I don't entirely remember where I was going with that. <laughs> that's part of being up a little too early, I guess. I'm just trying to yap while uh, ignoring the fact that I'm on Eclipse Experimentation. We're gonna check main real quick. I still have some time. Watch it. Wait, have I been here already? Dude, what's with these thumper spawns? Okay, never mind. We'll be happy with what we got. Felt like I was a FF veteran on day one with people new to the game, right? <laughs> you know, and that's that's another that's another reason why I want the guides to go out as soon as possible. Because Forsaken Frontiers is not an easy game. I understand the criticism of the enemy encounters because really the the only difference in the enemies right now, as far as like interacting with them goes, is the differences in how they detect you. But once you've been detected, it's all just a game of. Uh, chase, you know, running, door slamming, locking doors, hiding, and looping. Which is fair criticism. I enjoy it because the actual gameplay loop of of the chase is really fun to me. So it gets a pass in that regard. But the next two enemies that are being added to Forsaken Frontiers are not chase enemies. So for people who are looking for a variety in the AI, we're going to get that variety as soon as those enemies get added to the game. Also fair criticism for people who don't want to buy the game or think the game they should have waited a little bit longer to add those before releasing the game. It's fair criticism. So I'm just hoping that when these enemies do come out and all these changes do get added to the game that people will give it a chance then. Kind of like No Man's Sky, I think, right? Was No Man's Sky the one that was kind of like only okay on release and then now it's just kind of like a fantastic game? You know, there could be a future like that for Forsaken Frontiers. Or like Fallout 76, I... Hold well, on, I don't know if I'm on... <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm on voice activation. I think I last played with Nico, so... I think these dogs can hear me. So let me handle that real quick. Did you see V65? Yeah, that's actually why I'm here today. 
Um, I'm doing the experimentation only run and seeing if I get the hoarding bug event and seeing if it, that affects my run at all. Appy? Did I get the Appy? Or did I see one? Did I did I pass it up? I just didn't want to deal with the thumper, to be honest. Lethal has had years to cook. Dang, Lethal was cooking for years? I mean, I only I only joined in uh, once it went public release. And I've said it before for Forsaken Frontiers also, like, you know, the consumers, like gamers, they're not obligated to understand, like, the effort or, like, the time horizon that a dev put into their game. Like, that's too much to ask for. Like, if they if they have an opinion about the product they are they are purchasing, they are allowed to have that opinion. Um, obviously, it kind of sucks when you put in a lot of work into something and it's not received well. But that's just part of like putting yourself out there. I've had this, r I've done this rant multiple, multiple times in the past 48 hours. Looks like I'm kind of diving back into it again. And it was the same thing in food. Like, I can put a whole decade's worth of experience into doing food service, and I will still get people who, like, won't appreciate what's going on, and it's still fair game. God bless new non chase enemies where needed. I'm saying. And like, they've been kind of well. I won't. I won't leak about what what's going on, but I think there's some pretty cool ones that are gonna get added. There is a bit of a leak though in the in the Forsaken Frontiers Discord. Maylene did post a picture of oh shoot of her and Dio working on the a roadmap for post launch updates, and they leaked the names of a lot of enemies in that outline. And so uh. There are names out there up for speculation. I probably should have bought furniture first. I forgot the entire reason. I, did I just type in furniture? Oh my goodness. I forgot the entire reason why I'm doing this run. Um, I mean, 231 is not bad either way. We can buy a television still. Would have helped earlier. Maybe I would have got 220 or something. But at the same time, I don't really have a way to confirm if these furniture pieces are helping. I saw in Bread's video that, or at least in the comments section, because I, I wanted some clarification about some things he said, that only certain furniture will help increase your luck for lower quota rolls. So I don't know which ones those are. He said he's going to make a video on it sometime in the near future. I'd imagine in the next few days, or at least by the end of the week. Don't ask me. I'm not Bread's secretary or anything, <laughs> but I would like to know that answer as well. And as someone who doesn't know how to access game files, I'm just gonna have to wait until someone else does it. Maybe I'll have I'll ask Nico to do it. Nico knows how to do that. Huh? Oh, I went to the front. <laughs> I went to the company building. This is why you get good with push to talk. So, uh, I I I can do push to talk. I just like I prefer not to. <laughs> it's just one more thing to think about, and I don't like thinking. Not too much. I prefer toggle. I prefer toggle so much more, especially since, you know, as someone who does YouTube, as someone who streams, I can go on like long tangents while playing. And while I'm going on those long tangents, out of respect for everyone else, I will be pushing to mute or pushing. Or no, wait, I guess that would be the opposite, huh? Okay, I'm thinking of toggle mute or push to mute. Push to talk, though. I sometimes yap to people for a long time also, and I have to <laughs> also, uh, you know, do that for them. Or, back when Nico, Larry, and I were were doing content together, back when you would used to get more visceral reactions out of me for the things about Lethal Company, if I'm on push to talk I'm kind of taking away the opportunity for them, in their perspective, to catch my reactions to things, like vocal- like verbally, or vocally. And I feel like it would be a disservice to their content if they can't hear me like scream or something or get hear my voice get cut off by a turret or some snare flea death because I'm on push to talk. That's kind of like just something I'm thinking content wise. It might not be that big of a deal, honestly, but it's something that I've kept in mind, especially since like, you know, hearing people in proximity chat is a huge appeal to lethal company and proximity horror games in general. And so that's something I keep in mind. And I'm not going to like if I if I get jump scared by a bracken or a snare flea, I'm not gonna hit push to talk before I react. The reaction is just gonna happen, and then it's gonna go away as soon as it came. 
Oh, you know what? The goldfish being one of the luck uh, options is actually a pretty good... Um, actually, a pretty good guess. That would make sense, right? Goldfish are lucky or something? See, we're only in responsible for enjoying the product at the time, right? And, like, that's one of the risks you run by releasing a quote-unquote unfinished uh, product. Which, you know, objectively, Forsaken Frontiers is. Like, you can have a complete experience with the game as is, but the fact that they're planning on adding stuff throughout the year just means that the current state is incomplete. It was the same thing about Lethal Company. Lethal Company released in an incomplete state, despite being able to have a complete experience with it. We literally just got an update today, so anyone who disagrees with that um, might need to do some critical thinking of their own. <laughs> but, uh... It is one of the risks. Um, hopefully I right hugged fine enough. Toggle mute do be very convenient. I'm saying, I'm saying. And I'm so I'm super glad that high quota allows for toggle mute. <laughs> that was like my favorite mod ever. If anyone wants to know what my favorite mod in Lethal Company is, it's toggle mute. Also, good morning, June. Happy to see you. Um Fantastic for streamers, content creators, etc. I wish Toggle Mute was available or allowed in the speedrunning category. But if you speedrun Lethal Company, you can just be on Discord also. So, you know, you can have you can have Toggle Mute on Discord instead. Which I think is wild that you're allowed to do Discord in speedruns. Um, but I'm not going to combat it, you know. I'm not that pressed about it. I'm not even pressed at all. I'm just surprised. How's it going, Leia? Good morning, good morning. Sorry to leave so early, getting pretty sleepy. All good, all good. No, I'm I'm here for people to stay as long as they want to stay. And for anyone who can't stay or can't make it, you know, that's why I upload it all to YouTube as well. So this will all be going up on YouTube, as does all my Twitch stuff for the most part. So you can definitely watch the rest there. Or, you know, the VOD will be up on Twitch too. I don't like take these VODs down or anything. It'll be there. But have a good night, Raphael. Get some sleep. And hope to catch you at another time. Since I do plan on doing... Like, this isn't the only time I'll be streaming in the morning. I just happen... Like, if I happen to wake up around this time, I will stream. Wake up and have the energy. Because there's a difference between waking up and having energy and waking up and not. But I got enough sleep to have some energy, so we're out here. I'll give you truly the go Hey, <laughs> How's it going, Bella? Absolutely. And we got one of my favorite duos in Lethal Company. Coming, coming out and uh, showing up some support for that, for that, uh, for that mod. If you guys aren't following July by Day and Bella Bean, by the way, go follow them on Twitch. Fantastic, um, fantastic people to watch in the Lethal Company space. They're the ones who I was talking about earlier, you know, about the the duo that was doing Adamants only, and um, it's been a it's been a joy to tune in and watch them. Do like navigate territory that I have been avoiding for for so so long they're even doing uh they're even they, they go to like all the moons that i do not go to rend um did you guys do dine already i don't entirely remember i <laughs> i do remember tuning in for at least one of them though you see watch you on youtube while cooking a watching the chef while chef in yourself i'm lost Mr. Spore Lizard, please lead the way. Are you trapped? I'm so sorry. Okay, so that's not the way. This is not the way. This isn't the way either. Okay, hold on. Let me let me rack my brain real quick. And remember where I came from. Yikes. I think it's down here though. Right? No, this is... Oh, lord. Oh, god. Um, no, it was definitely... <laughs> it was definitely over here. It was definitely over here. Wait, did the stream crash? Did it really? Oh, no. Hello? Hello? 
Wait, is, am I live still? Guys, I can't tell. I'm back? Oh, word. Okay, welcome in. Today we are going to be doing an experimentation only run on version 65, which just dropped today for Lethal Company's one year anniversary. And in this update, you know, there's a handful of things that have been added to the game. Um, the two most notable... <laughs> Imagine doing an entire intro again. I did start this stream with doing my YouTube or my intro for YouTube. So you can kind of see... Are you I, Am I going to have to reset? Am, brother, am I going to have to reset? Okay, I'm... I'm going to right hug faithfully until I find my way. Oh no, I'm back here? Why am I back here? Oh boy. Well, uh, if it's if it's over, it's over. It's not that late into the run. But damn, I don't actually I actually don't want to lose this run because it had such a crazy start that I would love to keep it in. So for those who weren't here at the start of the run, I got an almost immediate thumper and ghost girl on day one at full odds. So it wasn't a hoarding bug day. I just happened to get thumper and ghost girl on day one of this. So if that's if that can be, you know, the seed that I got for the run that puts me on the leaderboard, that would be freaking awesome. Because I don't think it's very likely that I'm going to get a thumper ghost girl combo again. Um. Oh, well, I got the apparatus. <laughs> Wait, I'm back at the apparatus room? Already, I was already here. I was already here. Ever since I started tuning into your streams, I haven't watched any of your YouTube videos. That's fine. I mean, that's kind of like one of the risks I ran by uploading the way I do. Because my YouTube videos are basically just uh, popped up parts of my streams. And so I'm sacrificing a bit of my viewership my YouTube viewership by doing this but I mean I'm also not too pressed by it because I have a lot less viewers on a you or on Twitch than I do on YouTube so it doesn't f okay I'm pretty sure I came from that way now I'm not too pressed about people not watching my YouTube stuff because they tune into my Twitch streams I actually because like you know I think it's cool that people are actually just here live instead okay I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Was I supposed to go up in that loot room? Oh my gosh. Well, actually, don't tell me. I don't know if you're allowed to help me. So. That, that might be too much assistance. It's definitely not down here. Okay, so. It's definitely back here. I, th I actually think that I have to go up over through the loot room or something. Oh my goodness. Okay. Was it down here? I, I don't know if I checked down here yet. But I, I woke up this morning also thinking that I should do more curated Lethal Company videos also. Like, I'm already putting the energy into making Forsaken Frontiers guides. I said at one point that I would make some Lethal Company guides. So, if like, if I want to focus more on streaming Forsaken Frontiers and Lethal Company, but still want to upload Lethal Company, it might be in my best interest to just start making curated Lethal Company videos. It's like, it's... It takes some time, sure, but I think it would take less time and probably get a better return on, like, these longer Lethal Company runs that I go on. Because, you know, doing high quota is a huge time investment. Like, so far, Nico and I have completed, you know, two, two dual high quota runs for the leaderboard, and each one has taken about six hours each. Which is... which is a lot of time. Which is a lot of time. I mean, that's about probably about the same time it would take me to make a guide if I just try to speedrun one. Maybe it's this way. I feel like it's not. I feel like this is a dead end with a... With a landmine. Guys, I think I'm cooked. I'm gonna play it out still. Let me find that loot room again. Yeah, I mean, what, as, as to Jupiter's point about throwing them on in the background, that's kind of like 
why I leaned towards the the longer videos in the first place. I've said it many times, but I do I leave the videos mostly intact as is for the people who just want to have something in the background. Just because, like you know, that that was like one of the biggest feedbacks I've gotten for my videos when I was like you know first growing my channel. That was like the biggest feedback I got on my Titan only run, which is one of my best performing videos on the channel. <gasps> Why did it take me so long? Why did it take me so long? Why was I holding all my shit? <laughs> we live. Holy crap. Hey, we might get to we might get to keep this run going. We might get to keep the run going. I come back with zero dollars, but we might still make it on the leaderboard with our crazy start. So I had a misunderstanding about how, about the high quota leaderboard requirements. I apparently only need to complete six quotas, not seven. And completing six quotas is significantly easier than completing seven, especially on experimentation. Now a zero day on experimentation sucks real, real bad, but I also got a single item day pickle thing. so. Uh, that kind of makes up for it a little bit. I just can't zero out again. What's crazy is I didn't even zero out on Eclipse Day. I, zero I zeroed on a regular ass experimentation. Kind of embarrassing. But we got some cool people in chat. Made me a little bit nervous. <laughs> maybe, 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 perhaps. Not gonna lie. Turns out Morning Crew is pretty lit also. Not that I had any uh, shadow of a doubt. The people who tend to show up to my live streams, very cool. Very cool. I like you guys. <laughs> and it looks like my internet cut out again? Is it my internet or is it just... Or is it just Twitch? Because I have pretty good freaking internet. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if it's my internet. I feel like there's got to be a Twitch issue. I am much quicker to blame Twitch than my internet. But, oh, my, my stream cut out again. That's crazy. Why is this happening? D1. Welcome in, Smokey. My stream's actually cut out twice so far. So I'm glad that I'm recording. But. <laughs> Has King Crimson? That's kind of a secret that I was trying not to reveal. But, uh, you know, Twitch is kind of outing me here. I'm going to open the C1 door, by the way. Twitch mobile is unusable at work. I don't have the per perfect connection, it's not gonna work. Gonna watch YouTube vid, for sure. Sorry that the stream's not working out for you right now. It seems like it's not a you specific issue right now, Leia, so. Maybe for this run specifically, YouTube is gonna be the play. Because for some reason, Twitch doesn't want me to be live right now. Apparently I got ops over at Twitch. <laughs> oh well. We had. Take it easy, Leia. Have a good rest of your work day. And I'll still be around. Fiber fiber cable got snatched by a canary. Man, it, if fiber if fiber internet is so unstable that it gets destroyed by a bird, then I might have to talk to my internet service provider. But cable or fiber has been absolutely amazing to me so far. Which is why I'm more inclined to believe it's a Twitch issue. I'm scared of this room, by the way. Doesn't seem like a turret has targeted me yet. It is kind of whack, but it does make me grateful that I record while I stream also. Because if I didn't record while I streamed, then these stutters would not only not be good for, you know, the VOD that I post later on YouTube, but it might also bring my run into question for the high quota leaderboard if I, uh, you know, if that's all I had, like just segments of a video cutting in and out. I mean, that's kind of what player logs are for, because you're supposed to submit your player logs while also doing high quota stuff. And I'd like to say that I have a pretty decent reputation in the high quota community as far as like, not so much as far as performance goes, but absolutely in like integrity. Like, 
I have no reason or incentive to cheat on these things. I would not want to call like my runs into question for any reason. And there's no really no reason to. Like six quotas solo is should be light work for most of the uh, runs that I do. And if I'm gonna like put my name on a leaderboard or something, like there's really no point in doing it if I cheat. Like what's what's the point of that? Obviously, I'm still under the same scrutiny as everyone else that posts to the High Quota leaderboard. I'm not exempt from getting the full, you know, auditing just because I make YouTube videos. But I will be upset if, uh... <laughs> if something out of my control is why I can't do something. But, you know, there, there's... There's stop, uh, Or there's measurements... measures in place. To help someone out when that happens. Um, this clearly isn't where I came from. But this V-type is worth more. I'm calling out your runs for no reason. Please do. Please cancel me on YouTube. And gain a following. As a result. Oh, there was a loot room here. I didn't even notice. Unless I did and I checked it and it was empty already. Let's see. I have not checked it. So why is there an indoor power level of 30? So, there's a... It's not gonna be always, but in version 65, there is a new event for hoarding bugs. I forget what the name was called, but... Did I not pick up four items? What? Am I throwing? Where's the other item? Oh. Where, um... There's a 9% chance in version 65 for a hoarding bug event to happen. That'll... Oh, I dropped it down there? Wait, why did it drop down there? Where it'll spawn the max number of hoarding bugs early into the game and also increase the max indoor power level to 30 on no matter what map that you play on. That includes experimentation. And it also makes it so that every possible entity that can spawn on the map has an equal spawn rate also. So ghost girls that normally have a 0.44% chance to spawn in has an equal spawn rate as every other mob on the on the moon to spawn in. So I haven't had that yet. 8% chance it's probably going to happen at some point during this run. It's not guaranteed. But the fact that I tend to get meteor showers, which is a 0.6% chance of happening, makes me or leads me to believe that i will likely experience um the hoarding bug event before this run is over welcome back again guys welcome back twitch is being unbelievable today thank you twitch still a better streaming platform than youtube Maybe this is why uh, YouTube employees don't manually verify my videos, because I just keep talking. I might just have to be okay with this. Unless there's an apparatus right here. Yeah, I, I need to make sure I have time for this. If they pay me one mil to do it. The YouTube contracts are way bigger than that too. Way more than one mil. <laughs> one mil is like well I mean one mil would be fantastic for me but there are crazy YouTube contracts that are way more than that and I have no reason to believe that you would fake that sky that that's just not something <laughs> like why, why even say that? Like, you, the only reason people would lie about that stuff is to get, like, a reaction or something. But I would much rather get reactions to actual feats that I've done, rather than a reaction to making someone believe that I did something that I didn't. Real life isn't among us. I know I joke around a lot of times, <laughs> and I do like messing with people in that kind of respect. I do it a lot less nowadays. Um, but, you know. I, I like to play around a little bit sometimes. It's not out of my nature to, to like do a little funny. But as far as like achievements goes, I like, 
I'm fully about just making sure your achievements are for real, for real. Hey, you know what? If YouTube offered me a contract, I would probably take it. I have a price. I don't know what it is yet, but I got a price. I would go over to YouTube Live exclusive at the right price. But I am not one of the candidates. <laughs> I'm not like a very likely candidate to get that kind of YouTube sponsorship at this time. Not a big enough following and I'd say some decently not friend or family friendly things. And I know this because if you look at my channel with age res or with restrictions turn or in restricted mode turned on, it says that my last video was my murky divers guide from four months ago. And my most recent video is the debt guide that I, the Forsaken Frontiers debt guide that I uploaded yesterday. And it said that I did not upload anything in that four month time period, even though I've mostly up uploaded something every single day in that time period. It's kind of crazy, but I don't think most of my viewers what like experience YouTube in restricted mode. Um, but I am curious how much that has affected things or if, has made people think that I've just been inactive on YouTube because I was definitely not inactive for four months. I might have been inactive for certain parts of those four months, but especially like lately, I have been very, very active on YouTube. Da back to daily uploads and even multiple uploads a day now, especially with like the Dead by Daylight involved and now with Forsaken Frontiers. It's going to be more than one upload a day. It just is. Whether or not that's an effective strategy, we're going to find out if, if like, you know, doing the Northern Lion or Alexa plays type strategy is the way to go at this size. Um... In my head, it probably isn't. It's probably better to just do curated content less frequently. But this, I mean, it, it does enough to pay the bills right now. Maybe I'll just have to do, uh, so kind of just figuring it out in real time. Anyone who has like concrete answers to this stuff, um, actually doesn't. <laughs> This is so sad, can we get 30 gifted subs? <laughs> I'm not gonna milk you guys like that. I can't in good faith do that, but if you want to drop 30 subs, the button's right there. But you'll probably have to pick between 25 and 50, I think. Cause I don't think it lets you do 30 at once. <laughs> I wouldn't call Ludwig very family friendly. True. True. <laughs> Shout out to Ludwig. Big inspiration for me content wise. You know, Ludwig might be seen as a scammer and like, you know, that that kind of dude. But if you watch his like educational content on content creation, this dude is about it and has done his homework. And is a bona fide there is a bona fide businessman behind the personal brand of Ludwig and Mogul Moves and uh was it off the record? Fuck, I forget what his other business name is called. And that's kind of a blunder on my part for not uh knowing it or remembering it. Kind of saw like the behind the scenes in his uh, interview or behind the scenes with Colin and Samir. If anyone is a fan of Colin and Samir, big recommend for the podcast at least, especially with their interviews of different content creators and stuff, or just different people in general. Great podcast. Um, a lot of respect for Ludwig. Looks like I'm getting a lot of locked doors. I see why people get lock pickers now. Hey yeah. Uh, I think restarting the stream on my side would help. Um, I mean, I could just hit the... The lo like, start stream, stop stream button. I'm not gonna end the recording button, though. Unfortunately. Okay, can someone- Can someone go to, like, a different Twitch channel and see if it's just a, a me issue specifically? Is it just a me issue right now? Because if so, that sucks. I have no idea why that would be happening. I don't think my internet's cutting out at all. Oh, my internet is cutting out. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna hit stop, stop and start. Okay. Well, hopefully that fixes it, or else I'm gonna... Oops.
Failed to connect the server. Alright, well. Damn it, because I have to stop this I have to stop the recording too. Okay. Wait, maybe now? Okay, what I think I'll do... If it doesn't work now, what I will do is I'll just... I have to finish out the day though, so that way I have a... Um, definite start and end to the segment. Welcome in, welcome in. So I was saying like, if the problem persists now... I, will, I first have to com finish the day, so that way I have a concrete starting and stopping point for this session of the, of the run so I can keep this run eligible for high quota because I, I am recording on YouTube at least or not on YouTube on OBS and as long as my OBS recording is good we should be okay um but I have to make sure that I at least follow the rules for a high like a high quota run submission so if we're still having problems by the end of this day then I'll do the proper resets and stuff this is why I, uh, I stream later on in the day. It turns out Twitch just doesn't work in the morning in my area. Kind of like me. I don't work in my <laughs> in the morning in my area. I just be sleeping. This is what I get for waking up at regular people times. Twitch said go to bed, bro. We might also be in a very similar situation to where I don't know where I'm going. Can't say that, you know, Twitch disconnects aren't distracting. Because I do want to get on the high quota leaderboard, but I also want to make sure that everyone is here to properly see it. It's lasting right now. Surely I won't jinx it. <laughs> oh god, I hope so. Maybe all it needed was a quick reset. But that is also why we record in addition to streaming. Because imagine if I lost all of this stuff. Maybe I will maybe I've been secretly clicking the start and end stream button ever since, you know, people have said that they don't watch my YouTube videos anymore now that they tune into my live streams. And I'm trying to milk as much as I can out of people to watch my YouTube videos since my viewership is down. Maybe Chef Austin wouldn't be as slimy to do something like that. I don't know. I don't know him personally like that, so, uh, maybe, maybe he is doing something like that. He is pushing Forsaken Frontiers a little too hard. Can't believe he's pushing his own game. <laughs> Full disclosure, Forsaken Frontiers is not my game. I just like it a lot, man. <laughs> and stream on the W button, uh, start stream on the A button. Hot. Someone show this man's key logs. Someone show this man's key log. It sat on my headset. My condolences. Hopefully it didn't break at least. Why are all these- what is this offense? Okay. Okay, well. Not gonna pretend like I know how to do that. I've been sitting on my router for a while now. <laughs> Gotta keep it warm somehow. Like an egg. Okay. Uh, top streamer secrets, sit on your router. And people will watch your YouTube videos. <laughs> Just don't quote me on it, for legal reasons. For sure. Take it easy, Karma. Hope you had a good lunch break. And enjoy the rest of your day. At work. And at home. Say hi to Spin. Imagine getting dizzy, managing loot on experimentation. Bro would not last five business days on Artifice. Jeff Austin never plays the high tier moons. He always plays experimentation. Go play a real moon. Go play real lethal company.
Okay, I haven't gotten one of those in a while. <laughs> but I used to. Go play a real moon, Embryon. <laughs> I am interested on the Embryon leaderboard. I, I feel like Embryon... High quota is or high quota Embryon is the one the hardest leaderboard to get onto as a solo, but there have been people that have made it onto the high quota leaderboard as a solo, at least two now. So I'm a little bit late to the party it seems, and honestly it was people that I wasn't expecting to get on there. I thought like Mika was gonna be the first one on there, especially considering how much Mika has ran solo high quota Embryon, but it was not Mika, not for the first or the second one. So that leads, which is the crazy part about that, means that there was multiple people who were insane enough to run solo high quota Embryon. Not including me, Nico, or Mika. I'm gonna leave that there, so I'm gonna do Apparatus last. Normally you wanna do the highest value loot first. Um, but I'm doing the Apparatus last so I can at least see Waiting for that Embryon full squad high quota to come back. <laughs> um, good luck convincing Larry to play Lethal Company again. It's even less likely now that he'll come back. I also think the sweet spot for high quota Embryon is, so, is duo. Because doing 10 quotas on Embryon is actually just... I don't know. I, I don't know if, if, that's, if that's a thing. Which is fun, which is rich coming from me, especially after just having that conversation about things being hard and not impossible. I just don't know if it's something I want to grind entirely. Not when I'm not on most of the leaderboards currently, and with modded high quota being a thing also. Don't understand why it's kind only spawns on experimentation. Me neither. But it's kind of a cool little fun fact. Larry stopped playing Lethal Company? Yeah. He stopped playing a while ago, that's why he hasn't been uploading Lethal Company stuff. Um, he wanted to play, or stop playing Lethal Company a long, long time ago. Because, he, he's more of a variety gamer than I am. Like, obviously, he, he's gonna push whatever game he plays to its absolute limit. Or at least personally. Like, he, he's a completionist, perfectionist, and hardcore gamer. By nature. But because he can have such a complete experience with a game, you know, games to him tend to not have crazy replayability after a certain point, and Lethal Com like he reached that point with Lethal Company pretty fast. So that's why that's why Larry stopped like being part of the videos and part of the runs, and him showing up for Embryon was kind of like a nice surprise that none of us were expecting. It's funny because that day I set a boundary with like my Twitch chat and stuff saying that I I won't be accepting people who want to join in on my runs while I'm live since I, I like curating who I'm playing with beforehand and then like literally half an hour later Larry comes in and says yo can I play but for very obvious reason I made an exception for him because <laughs> there are people who miss Larry myself included myself included and there was no way I was going to pass up an opportunity to have him in my lobby again. But that was the last time I played with Lethal Company with Larry. That's probably the last time he's touched the game. And it might be the last time he ever does. Maybe not. Maybe there will be a come a time when he wants to play. But honestly, I'd rather he play Forsaken Frontiers with me. Maybe we can get him there. But he hasn't been doing the YouTube thing very, very hard lately. He's just kind of been doing real life things. So... Just got, exactly, just gotta get Larry to play F Forsaken Frontiers now. Will we replace Larry with an AI and make him sing how bad can I be for the whole map? Uh, Larry is an AI, actually. Um, a little bit of a lore drop for everyone. Just kind of a trade secret that I'm only now willing to disclose. Noting down Larry for Lockdown Protocol Party. I think- I don't think Lockdown Protocol is Larry's type of game. That's not really like a try-hard type of game or anything, that's just kind of like a fun party thing, but... If he's down, that would be cool. Oh wait, add like... I'm assuming this isn't a lot. 111. 
that would bring me to 227. But I think my quota is 231. Yeah, so if I can get one piece of scrap, that's five, well, that's four more than this. Right? Or five more. No, four. I'm looking for 26, 29, 30, or 42. 26. So I can put this back. Chef Austin Pro at Math confirmed. We're about to find out, I guess. Nico's been the one responsible for the math lately. 231. Oh, nice. Telling you I'm not bad at math, I'm just lazy. <laughs> right, that is Michael Jackson. <laughs> Miss Larry hasn't streamed in a while. Is he doing well? I actually haven't talked to him in a while. I said in yesterday's stream that I haven't really talked to my IRL friends in a really long time. Um, and that includes Larry, unfortunately. Um, so I hope he's doing well. Maybe I'll hit him up at some point. Like, literally, the only people I really talk to nowadays are Nico, Maylene, and Big Weave, because we play Dead by Daylight almost every night. Grief whenever she's in there as well. And then the people that I collab with in Lethal Company or, like, on stream, and the people who show up on Twitch chat. Don't really talk to too many other people nowadays. Not because I don't like them or anything, but because, you know, trying to focus in and see what I want to do. And when I have less going on, that kind of helps me in some way. Like, I, some of you have seen Loido drop drop in to stream. That's my dog. And like that, that's like the first time I've talked to him, even in a, like in a long while. And it's because he showed up here, you know. But it's really putting the whole like you know, friendships will last regardless if you stay in touch regularly thing to the test. It's just part of, like, I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be that way. Like, where being a, like, being a friend or acquaintance with me means that I might not be around all the time. Like, maybe it doesn't have to be that way, but that's just kind of how it is currently. I will say, though, that before Lethal Company, I was a lot better about my social life. 350 is kind of high, whatever. And then, you know. But now I have something that I actually just want to spend my time building towards, and it's like my thing, you know? YouTube, like, doing YouTube is something that I've built for myself and mostly, mostly by myself, apart from, you know, like, the people that I play games with and collaborate with. But as far as, like, learning the ins and outs of YouTube and trying to grow a channel, that's mostly something that I've done on my own, which I take good pride in, and I'm, and I'm like, actually just proud of. Um, obviously, we're not at crazy heights at the moment. But I think it's unrealistic in business and also just content creation to think that you will just keep going up and up and up linearly. That's not how growth works in the real world. But that, I'm glad that that's like a perspective that I had coming into this thing. Because I think other people in my shoes might might have like crumbled a lot sooner than, than me. But I ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So <laughs> can't get rid of me that easily. 12, 2. I got two beehives today. <laughs> Let's go bowling? I actually haven't gone bowling in a really long time either, which is insane. Also, I don't- I know that there's a new beehive strategy in current Lethal Company. I haven't learned it, but it's only two beehives. I don't think I'll need to do it. It's the one that Bread showcased in his video just titled Bee. And, um, it's something that I should learn, actually. Especially as a solo player, like, that just makes collecting multiple beehives, especially more than two beehives, very, very viable. Client cancelled on me, stuck with me for a bit longer. Welcome back, sir. <laughs> Welcome back. It happens, it happens. I'm currently running my first beehives of the run. Which is interesting. Beehive, because I don't know where the other one is. The other one's probably over there somewhere, if I had to guess. It usually is. 
Did this a little too early. I'm still a little shy on stamina. Cannot be bothered to do math even when I'm trying to minimum sell. So I'm saying, you know, like, it's not like I'm going for world record pace or anything. I'm literally just trying to get on the board. And it, if getting on the, if like the few extra dollars that I oversell cost me from completing six quotas, then something went wrong long before I decided to oversell by four. That's just the truth. I should be able to do six quotas, overselling by four, no problem. Even on experimentation. Seven quotas, we get it gets a little bit more dicey. Six? Six is light work. Should be light work anyway. There are two reasons why it wouldn't be light work. One, I get the new hoarding bug event and I just get absolutely stomped. Or two, I get a very unlikely and untimely meteor shower. Three, I get lost. <laughs> Okay, I said two reasons and I listed off three. That just, you know, further uh, leans into the thing that math doesn't matter too much in terms of the micro <laughs> or macro, I guess, whichever one you want to file that under. See, if I just did Bread's B strat, I wouldn't be struggling like this right now. I would have been in the facility already. Guotaing. Yeah, we got our two beehives. That's already, like, pretty good. 224 for two beehives. Higher than what I need per day. Slightly making up for my zero day earlier. If I complete this quota, I'll be halfway uh, to what I need for the leaderboard. But yeah. Finally getting into the facility around noon time. But I still have plenty of time to do what I need to do. I'm losing time by not getting this fire exit entrance here. Big bolts. Not a big bolt only day though. Because those are not worth 50 plus. It is worth regular big bolt values. Three items off rip is pretty good. No need to move those yet. Especially that of oh, four objects. Sometimes when like a piece of loot is elevated, I don't like picking it up and moving it right away because I don't think hoarding bugs, I hear the apparatus, I don't think hoarding bugs can get them when they're like the H5. Please don't be anything ridiculous. Okay, thank you. I might have to open up H5 to get that apparatus. Is there a door over here? Watch it be locked. Oh, well. We'll consider opening H5 for the apparatus. We'll check main first though. Oh, there's a whole big room over here. Maybe we'll check this first. Plastic fish. You too? I mean, even if I don't get the apparatus, this is still pretty good. I have to make at least two trips now that I got this plastic fish. Thing here. Another key. Some smoke or steam rather. Another loot room. Depending what's in here, I might transfer. Okay. Fair enough. Tyler Creator announced tour. Die of broke. Let's go. <laughs> Is that the reaction you're expecting? <laughs> Speaking of Larry and Tyler the Creator, Larry's a big Tyler the Creator fan. Shout out Larry. We all miss Larry around these parts. Okay. Let's tr let's start transferring and see if we have enough time to come back for the apparatus. Which we probably will. I mean, I also said I was going to check main, which I haven't done yet. 
It was mostly Tyler, yeah. I remember there was one... T I don't remember the context. Oh, back... Because back before I was doing YouTube and stuff, and before I fully sent my... Uh... My chef career. I was also just trying to figure out a blogging one, because I really like writing also, which is really funny considering how little scripted YouTube content that I do. And I remember there was a time where both Larry and I were on a writing grind. And I remember... We were considering Tumblr as an unironic platform to grow as a writer. Because there was some there was something there was something I saw that was valuable on Tumblr in recent times. As a as a potential platform for a writer. And Larry made a post about Tyler the Creator on there and it ended up getting a lot of traction. So and I think Larry saw more success on on doing like music review Tumblr than I did doing whatever the hell it was I was doing. So I felt somewhat vindicated in choosing that kind of platform for what we were trying to do. In seeing Larry's success on it. And I wonder what could have happened if like uh, we kind of continued that endeavor. Tumblr seems to have a fun community. I haven't, I mean, I haven't been on that platform in a really long time, so I can't really speak for like its state nowadays but it was an interesting platform to explore back then which is probably like pre-covid era if i had to if i had to guess because i remember spending a lot of my time in courthouses just kind of writing stuff uh, towards blo like books blogs etc i didn't want to be on camera at the time i wanted to mostly just use writing words etc i was very much about staying a not like not necessarily anonymous but not so much like being in front of a camera. Like that was just kind of a big thing for me. I didn't really want to be on camera. Not that I'm like afraid to show my face or anything. It just, it takes a lot more effort to prepare yourself to show up on camera than it does to not. Obviously I'm here being one of the few like face cam lethal company people out there. Um. I have no problem going on TV and stuff, which I had to do a lot for sushi and other purposes. But all of that, even like presenting myself on camera and stuff, a lot of the fundamentals, or at least in what I'm supposed to say, can be honed in writing also. Or it's better practice if you have writing behind it. Like not everyone will have like a webcam or anything or want to be on camera, but everyone can use their words to communicate things. And there are, I mean, social media is great for having a platform to do things. I don't think I'm going back for this apparatus, by the way. Not confident I have the time to. And I think this is good enough. I, I also have, like, beehives, you know. I'm, I'm on pace for a six quota. I'm also already on the experimentation-only leaderboard as a duo with Nico, like... I feel like our duo score was pretty good. Was it the absolute best we could have done? Probably not. There's a world where we completed 11 quotas instead. It wasn't that one. But we completed 10. Which was 4 more than what we were shooting for. But can't say I'm upset about it. Okay. Let's get our beehives. Uh oh. Nice. I thought I was gonna be a little late, but I'm glad I wasn't. Four fifty six. Very clearly good. What am I doing? No, they got collected. In current Lethal Company, it doesn't have to show up as collected in the bottom right. Back in version 40, and I think 45 it did. Which is why, like, Nico and I and Larry and I, for a long time, were very, very, very adamant about making sure that the beehive collected in the bottom. And for the longest time, I was told many, many times that you do not need to wait 
for this thing to be collected. It's just not a thing. And there was just a big disconnect between like what people were telling me and what I've actually just seen in game. Because I have seen beehives disappear in front of my face for not having that happen. And it was only from down patching back to version 40 that I learned why. And it's because in the early versions of Lethal Company, you absolutely had to collect loot, have, have it say collected, or else it just wouldn't count. And that wasn't exclusive to beehives, that was just in general. And I learned that because in version 40, I tried doing the strategy where you drop scrap through the top of the ship, which you can still do in version 40, but in all versions, it doesn't show that the scrap was collected when you do that. And when I did that in version 40, because it didn't collect, it all disappeared. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Karma, for that. Uh, I was ready. I was ready, though. I jumped. I, I was at least ready. Um, I didn't even know where, where that thing was coming from. I was like, fair enough. Uh, experimentation be like that. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a while. But yeah, that thing's been fixed. So I've... I've been a lot more consistent with collecting beehives now. And way less stressed about it. So... A good thing to know for sure is... I need to get um, some Forsaken Frontiers sound uh, sounds up at some point. I think it'd be funny. Like a vent pop from the Venturous or uh, some other sounds. The breathing, just like breathing. Make me think that I, there's enemies nearby. Probably make the Forsaken ones cheaper, though. Oh. Okay, Austin. Did I already go fire? Why did I go main? Oh, because they're all together, that's right. Sound problems in FFR and has punchy. Yeah, that can be. I'd say the the punchiest one is absolutely the venturist. Okay, so that's probably what happened to my flask earlier. Because I. Okay, I'm just gonna move on. Um, I didn't want that Easter egg anyway. God, dude. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I, I don't know, man. Vibes are off. I'm pulling this. I'm leaving. I'm underperforming today. I don't care. I earned it after the four whatever I got on experimentation yesterday. I feel like these hoarding bugs are gonna want this apparatus. I'm not gonna let them have it. How's it going, Phantom Minium? Cooking experimentation so far. I almost got cooked. I almost got cooked. It is in my best interest to complete this run though, because <laughs> it has been a wacky run so far. I started it off with a Thumper and Ghost Girl combo. I've been actively fighting off uh, Twitch disconnects for my stream. Um, I got lost once and just barely made it back in time. People say experimentation can't be entertaining. All you need is someone who is good sometimes and bad sometimes to do it. <laughs> I just threw an egg through a, through a metal floor. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I've also gotten multiple thumpers, by the way. I'm I'm just glad that that egg was only worth 24. Imagine if that egg was worth a lot more. 
I'm now imagining what a uh, single item day with Easter eggs would look like. Holy moly. I did get a single item day this run too. I got single item day pickles. Love to see it. Now what's crazy is that they weren't all worth a 69. I thought pickles had a static... Had a static single item day value of 69. I'm wrong. And you know what? That's not even true. I don't know why I think that. Because I've had single item days with pickles. Where they were worth differently than 69. So... Pickles are the best items. I like pickles in game and I like them in real life. Shoutouts to everyone who likes pickles. Pickled onions are where it's at though. Or if you want to like extend the word pickled to kimchi as, as well. Because I mean it is, you know, a pickling process. Kimchi is awesome also. Pickled veggies, very easy way to add veggies to your diet also without, you know, them going bad. Regular pickles, you have to kind of have the good ones to enjoy them, and it's also not for everybody. I've grown to like them, though. I can't eat a lot of them, but I like what they do when they're implemented as a dish. Like, I'm not just snacking on pickles by itself. Kimchi, I'll, I'll eat by itself. Fried pickles are amazing. <laughs> Love me some fried pickles. Can't eat fried pickles all the time. Can't eat fried- well, I could eat fried food all the time. I'm not going to. I think I need to be a lot more physically active in order for me to do that. But I am using this time to, you know, uh, bring physical activity back into my life. Exercise, etc. Mentally, very- I'm very big on physical health. Like, the benefits of being physically healthy are very good. It ju it's just a thing. In practice, Hasn't been the best, at least for the past few months. But now that I have I have to like absolutely output for Forsaken Frontiers while still maintaining Lethal Company and sometimes playing Dead by Daylight, Chef Austin gonna have to be a bit more fit at, in order to do that on top of his game. So I don't know if I've said it on stream yet, but I bought a standing desk. I mean, we so the walking pad streams are gonna come back at some point. I have my suspension trainers directly behind me, tag, tied to the bookcase. And whenever I play Dead by Daylight now, like, I, I just be doing, like, uh, different exercises between games. And it's been a good feeling. I've been cooking a lot more at home, making sure that, like, my meals are nutrition- like, nutritionally nice, instead of just kind of going out and going crazy. Trying to figure it all out again. Because just like, you know, the whole ebb and flow of co creating content, so- so- such is the experience of, you know, personal development and self-improvement. The freaking hoarding bug just steal my stuff. What was that sound effect? Can't say that like, st yeah, exactly, Carl. Like, I can't say that sticking to physical fitness and all that, like, that lifestyle is an easy one to maintain. It was one that was easy to maintain when I wasn't doing Lethal Company on YouTube. <laughs> And because my job, like, my job as a chef required me to be physically fit. Like, if I wasn't in good shape as a chef that worked the hours that I did, I just would not survive. It just wasn't a thing. And that was kind of, like, my big motivator for getting in shape in the first place. Because, like, if I wanted to be the kind of the chef that could lead a kitchen and, like, run a business the way that I wanted to, I could not be the kind of chef that would work 10 to 12 hour shift 6 to 7 days a week and be tired afterwards. Am I really getting haunted again? Nah, dude. Like, what is this? Did V65 increase the ghost girl spawns or what the hell? That wasn't even fake. I don't see a sound redemption here. <laughs> I've been- I've got- I've gotten haunted twice. Attracting too many girls? It's just like me pre-lethal company. <laughs> I have a standing desk too, minus hydraulics so it goes up and down. Right. Mine as well. Mine has- I mean, I, I was looking into it. Because, you know, I did like the walking pad stream. I did used to have a standing desk attachment before I moved. And, I'll, and you know, and my, my aunt also got a standing desk for herself. And with the amount of hours that I'm just sitting down now, I'm like, 
I started to really feel like the downsides of leading a sedentary life. I was like, okay, I've done this before. I've gotten myself into like good, imagine if I died there, into good physical stature before I've done it. Let me just do it again. And getting a standing desk is kind of just one of the small things that'll help me do that. Frying my pickled tomatoes for Chef A. Hey, fried tomatoes underrated also. Um, the green tomatoes are especially good for frying too. Like the unripe ones. But I have, I currently have three settings on my standing desk. The first one is for when I'm sitting like I am right now. The second one is for when I'm standing, which is probably my more used one off stream. And my third one is for a height when I'm using the walking pad also. I still have a fourth button that I haven't figured out what to use it for yet. But if I ever figure out something else, then I'll do it. But I think those three settings are pretty solid. That request... Worst part of the job requests lots of time being burnt out. Exactly, right? And, um... You know, but I was very passionate about what I was doing in food, you know, leading the, leading the kitchen that I was that I was leading, small business type thing. Had a lot of leeway and creative freedom for what I was able to do. And I had a, like, I had a lot of friends to work with. And as the person who even brought them into the business in the first place, I thought it was cool that I was able to, like, lead my friends to an opportunity that they can support themselves with. And, um... Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, and that's when I started thinking about, like, whether or not it was the thing that I wanted to do. And I started losing a lot of, like, that energy that was pushing me, that was, like, basically preventing my burnout, right? Because what I've learned is that burnout isn't so much about, like, being overworked necessarily. It's more about, like how you feel about the work that you're doing and whether or not it's worth it to you. If that makes sense. Cuz I'm not I'm not opposed to working hard. I'm just not. Like when I when I was first building like working as a chef, I I would find like working the long hours very like fulfilling. Um and even when I was first building like a lethal company presence, I would work those 10 to 12 hours in the kitchen and then come home and then do what I needed to do for lethal company YouTube. I was basically, I was effectively working like 16 to 20 hour work days regularly back to back to back. And I enjoyed it. But I've also worked a lot less hours doing other jobs that I just didn't know what I was doing it for anymore. And didn't know if it was something I wanted to do in the long term. And even if I was working part time, like four hours or maybe just, you know, the standard eight, those would drag on and drain me a lot more than some of the 20 hour work days that I've had. And it's because I wasn't mentally dedicated to those jobs that I was burnt out from. Or like that I wasn't... I couldn't dedicate myself to, to those jobs. The ones that didn't mean anything to me. And you know, that's kind of like why I would burn out from Lethal Company sometimes. Like the few times I did, I was just questioning whether or not like Lethal Company was something I wanted to do for the long term. And that's like not a question. Or that's not like an insight I can get from too many people about lethal company specifically because there are there are just aren't too many people doing lethal company to like the same capacity like that i do i, I guess if you want to call it say it like that i don't want to like sound too arrogant saying that at least lethal company youtube to the same caliber like there's bread and alter ego um i'm gonna throw illusion up there for his dedication to youtube shorts and youtube live Viperian for like his dedication to showcasing lethal company mods Obviously you can t I can talk to other people about burning out and content in general But I also don't like Have a lot of friends who are trying to push their own stuff like this also, you know who are like business owners or content creators, etc, etc But that's also why I look to YouTube also. Like I would watch a lot of people who are into personal development and personal branding and content creation and like uh, online business or whatever, if I didn't say that already. So 
I've looked I've looked for advice and stuff and tried try to take it to heart. Do what I can. Do what I must. Let's buy a cozy lights. Buy a table. I I'm led I can't in my head, there is no world where buying the other suits are gonna benefit me really. So um yeah. I think it's gonna be these furnitures that help increase my luck. So that's what I'm shooting for. And eyeing one of those VR omnidirectional treadmills. Hmm. Gotta truck myself into physical fitness. That could be a fun way to do it. Cause I, the reason why I even did the walking pad and set up my suspension trainers behind me in the first place is cause I wanna tie gaming to fitness. Because I'm already spending so much time gaming that if, if I can enjoy working out while doing it, that's awesome. I mean, I spend at least, well, now that Forsaken Frontiers is out, it hasn't been that much of the case. But I was playing Dead by Daylight regularly for like four to six hours a night and just been sitting at my desk. And at some point I realized, wait, why don't I just do workouts in between games? And I was, I started to really enjoy that. And some, like doing, doing like a set, doing a set of any exercise between games was good. Well, one, it's good physically and it was also good mentally because I could feel good going into the next game. And it's kind of sick. Maybe I'll start doing workouts during cell periods. Especially when Nico's here. Nico can sell and I'll just go hit his quick set real quick. Gamer base is still growing as far as for Lethal Company. I mean, Lethal Com I think Lethal Company is going to be around for a long, long while. A lot, lot longer than I originally anticipated. It's insane how many people are still playing this game and getting into it. And, um, very happy for Zekers, very grateful for my position and being able to play it for so many people. And, um, but if I can also add Forsaken Frontiers into that and can make it a significant part of what I do here, that would be cool too. Especially because, you know, Lethal Company, I kind of just hopped onto the hype train and now I have a, a bit of a following as a result. But it's not so much that I don't feel like the influence that I've had over people has really helped push Lethal Company's success in a very significant way. It, ha it has pushed people to enjoy Lethal Company in ways that they probably wouldn't have, and I'm like very, that makes me very happy. Like, I get real happy when people tell me that they run Iron Mans, or that they watch my videos and they've gotten better at the game as a result. Very fantastic. Lethal that said, Lethal Company doesn't need me to be making content. For it to succeed. Lethal Company would be in a fantastic spot regardless if I was here or not. And I feel like one of the big points of growing an audience in the first place is to be able to like influence people to do something. Like I've and I think it would be a lot more meaningful to me if I was able to use like my influence in this space to push something a little bit smaller, like Forsaken Frontiers. Like obviously they're they're both indie game dev studios. Forsaken Frontiers could probably use my, use my help. So this is like, pushing Forsaken Frontiers is kind of like my first real test to see what kind of pull I have as a content creator to influence people's decisions that they might not have made without me being here. If that makes sense. Because I feel like I'm one of the people who are pushing Forsaken Frontiers the hardest. I've gotten a, a decent amount of flack for doing that. Uh, and low-key using Lethal Company as a platform to push it. I don't think I'm wrong in doing that. I think there's a lot of going to be a lot of overlap between people who enjoy Lethal Company and who enjoy Forsaken Frontiers. And I just happen to be in a position where I like both of them and have reach that could reach the, pe the right people. And I just kind of want to see where that goes. So, Like, if anyone was wondering why I push Forsaken Frontiers so hard... That's like a big reason behind it. I don't get paid to push Forsaken Frontiers. And if I did, I would actually have to disclose that. Like, I would have to say that this is a paid promotion. But it is not a paid promotion. This is literally something I'm doing out of passion for the gaming, out of support for a small game dev studio. And, like, kind of like as a challenge for myself to see, like, what kind of influence I can actually have with where I'm at right now. So... You know, I mean, I've always been a challenge-oriented content creator. It's just that now, it's, I just don't do only in-game challenges. Like, Iron Man, Iron, Iron Man's an in-game challenge. Maybe I'll do a real-life Iron Man at some point. That's kind of what I was training for before this. 
but I also like to challenge myself as a content creator, as an quote unquote influencer, et cetera, et cetera, you know, but yeah. Don't mind hearing on how you think I could push illustrator stuff. Not exactly brimming with commissions, even though I'm actively searching for them. And you know, like having these conversations like this, I'm probably going to make them into separate videos. Just kind of talking about like content creation and just building a personal brand and stuff. And uh, like that that's literally what I was going to do before Lethal Company. I was going to build a podcast about talking about like personal branding, uh, like online or digital marketing and all that stuff. And then Lethal Company came out and I had an opportunity to show that, I had an opportunity to prove that the concepts that I had in my head actually work out in the field and for video games specifically, which is a bit more of a relatable, uh, in, like, I don't want to say industry, relatable endeavor, I guess, than sushi. Because not everyone, I can, not everyone's gonna be a sushi chef. Not everyone's gonna be part of sushi catering. So that that part's a little bit less relatable. But everyone can pick up a video game. Mo everyone who can play a video game can most likely. Okay, ninety nine. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna stick to the extremes. Everyone who who can play Lethal Company can also upload videos to YouTube. Therefore, they can also do what I do, and that has always been a big thing for my channel. I'm doing it so people can see a regular ass dude. Like doing this and making some making some dough doing it and be like, wait a minute, I'm actually better than that fool. Let me go do it myself. Like if you think you're better than me, go go prove it. I'll be very happy for you. That's exactly what I'm here to do. It's not just let me make this challenge so people can show me how much better they are at the game. It's let me make this let me establish this YouTube presence so people can do it better than I do. That makes sense. DVD, but if we die, we do 20 push-ups. <laughs> um, I'm down. Finn jokes about, I'll just be panting into the mic the whole time. <laughs> hey, some people are into that. Maybe you should Maybe you should consider it anyway. It also, it'd also be really funny. And also, even if you were panting the whole time in the beginning, you having recordings of yourself doing that in the beginning and then growing into someone who isn't panting all the time later on will just kind of be a way to document your growth as a cardio enthusiast as a forced cardio enthusiast on a VR omnidirectional treadmill. I'm just saying. Like, remember in my only walking pad stream, I was out of breath. I was out of breath and I was only walking. My cardio was not in the best place, despite being someone who was training for a marathon, despite someone who had given up smoking. But there will be improvement from that walking pad stream to where I'm going to be in like five to 10 years. But yeah, don't think I could even do 20 pushups, period. Um, I think I could do 20. I'm not going to do 20 right now, but... <laughs> hey, little speedrunner who would say the same. Feel amazing every time you encourage someone to do runs or pass campaigns on certain difficulties. Right. Because, like, I do this because I enjoy it, and because I enjoy it, I want to share my experiences with people in the chance that they might enjoy it as well. Especially if I'm doing something that is less conventional than what people... than how people are approaching things. I don't think the way I've approached Lethal Company has been very conventional. It might be more conventional now, where Lethal Company is at, but no one was thinking about like crazy challenges like that in early Lethal Company. No. See, nothing wrong with pushing something you think is cool. That's what I'm saying. If I didn't think it was cool, I wouldn't be pushing it. I did say that I have a price. Or Second Frontiers isn't paying me anything. <laughs> My price isn't free. My, pr my price definitely isn't free. I stay to see your runs because of how you comment and play in a very chill way. Other players tend to scream a lot. Right. And like, I've never, I've never really claimed to be like the best player of Lethal Company or the funniest or anything. And I really think that for people to stand out on social media or just as people in general really, is to just really be open and share your thoughts on things what's share what's on your mind like that's how you're gonna differentiate yourself from the crowd not just on social media but in real life too like if, if you're just kind of open with who you are and how you are you will eventually find your tribe of people like there's so many especially when you do it online there are so many people in the world that are on the internet that even if you don't have anyone that you can relate to in real life 
there's going to be someone out like a, a lot of people out there who will relate to who you are as you are but the only way they can do that is if you put yourself out there I thought that you can only move on an omnidirectional treadmill. <laughs> I, you would see me crouch walking everywhere on an omnidirectional treadmill. Pressed but didn't really answer. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into specifics right now. Because, you know, that's probably a lot of effort. That I, I should be putting into going into experimentation. Um, Daniel would appreciate any advice in the area. Burning with passion for art. Don't really know how to put myself in people's faces. I mean, one way... I, the immediate way I think of right now is just, like, very quickly, just put a lot more of your art out there. Produce, put it out there, build your portfolio, um, and yeah. Instagram's probably really good for building an artist portfolio. I don't know if Instagram is allowed in Russia. Like, sorry for my ignorance. Um, and also, like, shorts are particularly good for artists also. Shorts and TikToks and whatnot. It's not? Okay, well, we'll have to think of something. <laughs> but that's what I'm thinking, like, no one's going to be able to commission you if they can't check out what your art is like. So you're going to, I know you have, like, your portfolio, like, your website and stuff, so you just need to find a way to funnel people over there. You got YouTube, though. You got YouTube shorts. Start making art content. Stop making Lethal Company content. <laughs> or Dead by Daylight stuff. I'll be the best FF player. Let's go. If I could have inspired the best FF player to pick up FF in the first place, then I will have done my job. Speaking of doing my job, let's go continue this experimentation run. What's funny is that now, if I if I actually go the distance, the people who are verifying this run are going to have to sit through that rant. Because I'm not allowed to cut that part out. <laughs> so, what's up, Ocles? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Now I have every reason to not fail this run. What quota am I on? I am now on quota four. Fourth quota. So, three more quotas. I'm, I'm halfway there now. <laughs> Just gotta complete three more and I'll be in the money. Got nine objects though. It's not like fantastic. But, you know, I don't need fantastic for six. It's like less than 200 average that I need for uh, six quotas. So I'm not particularly worried. I'm just playing for life, honestly. Because if I die, then that's going to be very tragic. Then I'm going to have a two hour experimentation run. Another one where I did uh, basically nothing. <laughs> it's going to be like, a, like my Kidnapper Fox video where I went fox hunting for three hours and did not encounter a single kidnapper fox. Which is really funny. Because it was one of my better performing YouTube videos as far as like views goes. And a lot of people were like, bro made a kidnapper fox video and didn't even see one. Or bro made a two hour video essay on a kidnapper fox. Honestly, I wish I did. It was not a two hour video essay on the kidnapper fox. It was a four minute um, intro about my thoughts on the kidnapper fox and then like two hours of me trying to find one <laughs> in game. Yet another experimentation only run. Honestly, the reason why I run experimentation so much is because I get the most views doing this stuff. <laughs> like people say that they want me to go play more dangerous moons. No one watches my dangerous moon videos. Everyone watches my experimentation only videos. I don't understand, but I'm not gonna question it. Actually, I, I do understand. It's because generally when I have a cool Lethal Company run idea that I want to introduce into the Lethal Company space. I do it first on experimentation because it is the the moon that I am most likely going to be able to showcase it the best. Because and it's because there isn't a lot of crazy stuff going on that I can focus more on the concept than trying to deal with just regular Lethal Company stuff. That's the big reason why I do experimentation only stuff. It's a way for me to litmus test to see if people would be interested in the concept in the first place. And apparently my midnight only uh, challenge is a good one. Because that one performed really well. 
like I don't get a lot of views on my channel nowadays. So the 30,000 that I got on that video and counting is fantastic. It has a one hour and six, one hour and 16 minute average view duration, which is absolutely insane. Like that is the, that is only my second video where I have a longer than one hour average view duration. That means like of the 30,000 people that watched it, people like on average, people watched at least one hour and 16 minutes of it. And I think that's crazy. I, they watched one hour and 16 minutes of me playing experimentation on average. And I am very grateful for those people because that video made me a lot of money. <laughs> um, that one low key paying the bills this month. Edit some stuff, can't even find my damn recording. Not smart, so I didn't name it or sort it properly. Man, I don't even name or sort my stuff. <laughs> I just get to it so fast that I don't... That I'm never really confused about where it's at. I, Nico ha does, or probably is in a similar boat as you though. Because Nico does not have as fast of a turnaround time as I do. And that dude is sitting on literal terabytes of footage. And that shit sounds like a nightmare to me. I edit as fast as I do, so I don't have to deal with that. I do have a lot of Forsaken Frontiers footage from like the playtest that I haven't fully gone over. Like I only recently, like a week or two before release, finally went through all of my footage from the first playtest. But I have not even touched my footage from the second one yet. I'm like, god damn, and now the game's out too. But, I mean, it... It's not crazy important to me that I go through all the footage from the second playtest because now that the game is out, footage from the real game, like the public release, is going to be a lot more valuable to me at this time. Am I getting enough? I feel like I'm not. Whatever. People might prefer chill content as well. Just having it in the background is nice, right? And like, I, I just can't be that high energy content, like gamer, you know? It's just not in I mean if I if I did then I wouldn't really be that's not something that would be sustainable like you know I had a lot more energy at the start of this stream and I even said like I don't know if I'm like how long I'm gonna be able to keep this one up but it's not gonna be like an in-your-face type energy right I'm just actually awake and not long asleep at least um, get that bag King I'm trying to I'm trying to that's why I'm back to uploading regularly you know, took quite a financial hit by only uploading Dead by Daylight for a month. But you know, I'm also grateful to be in a position where I can where I can take that hit and I can take that risk. Can't take too many of the too many more of those, but uh it's something that I was able to like experiment with for a little bit at least. Trust me, before before it gets bad enough, I'll just get another job. It is what it is. I know, like, job market is kind of crazy right now, but when you, like, just get a food job, like, food jobs are always hiring. I might come back for this stuff, actually. Alright, have a good night, Kreef. Catch you later. People either prefer low energy or high energy audience for both for sure exactly right and some people even they like both but you know people people aren't so simple that they only want one thing all the time you know i i have my i have times when i want a more chill experience and i have times when i want something a bit more upbeat and you know there's go-to people for every kind of vibe. It, there's just so many people on the internet nowadays. So many people in my life that I can go to for that kind of energy as well. If that's what I opted for. I'm just glad that there's an audience for... ...of people who enjoy what I do the way I do it right now. So I think I'm in a very privileged position... ...to be in a place where people will just watch me play a video game. Not just on stream, but also on YouTube. Also. Like, I think it, it's insane to me that people will watch me play this video game 
for as long as I do. Even when it's literally just kind of footage of me playing the video game and not doing like curated content like Bread or Alter Ego and stuff. But even me personally, I do the same thing. I don't do it with Lethal Company, but I, I like a lot of the gaming content I would watch or have watched historically is just the people playing a video game. I will say that when Super Auto Pets first came out, I was watching every single Super Auto Pets playthrough that I could get my hands on. That's when I became a huge Northern Lion fan. I used to watch Scooty. Um, those are the first two that come to mind anyway. Um, I, I like when I was getting into Dead by Daylight, I would watch all of Uts Darva's long playthroughs and stuff. I would watch True Talent's games. Like, dude, True Talent literally just uploads a whole game of Dead by Daylight as a video, and he uploads like four to five of them, multiple of them a day. And I think that's pretty baller. Mm. Uh, Eric Rosen, I used to watch him a lot for his uh, for his chess gameplays and stuff. Slice and Dice, there's a guy that I would watch pretty frequently. I don't, his name's not coming to mind right now. And I would literally just watch them play games, so I understand the appeal of watching someone play a video game. I might not, like, be a Lethal Company, too much of a Lethal Company viewer myself, but I totally understand where it's coming from. The content is you talking, I'm not even actually watching the Lethal gameplay. Right, I'm not even watching the gameplay right now, I'm literally just autopiloting, I don't even know how many objects I got. Two. Seven. And that was the whole point, like, going back to, like, not being the best Lethal Company player, the most funny person ever. Because those are usually the two... Two of the three highest performing types of entertainment type content, because I would say the game Lethal Company gameplay content falls under entertainment. Like, you're either gonna be very, very skilled, like, top bracket of the performing gamers, like Bread and his crews, for example. Um, you're gonna be extremely funny, which I would put, like, Mythzon under, you know? Shoutout to Mythzon. Or, you can be extremely good looking. Um, you know? And since I didn't fall into the other two... Oh, well, we'll just let everyone else fill in the blanks. We got a Stormy. <laughs> we got a Stormy weather. Oh, uh, yeah, do I want to risk this? You get struck by lightning? I feel like my odds of getting struck by lightning are increased after what I just said. Can I afford to skip? I don't know if I can afford to skip. Alright, well, we're gonna go. <laughs> uh... Obviously those aren't the only three, like, demographics for entertainment and stuff, but those are three high-performing demographics as far as entertainment goes. Off topic, have I ever played Outer Wilds? Did I answer this question already? Uh, I have not played Outer Wilds. I... Like, for the past year or so, I've played nothing but, like, Lethal Company. And Chess, and Slice and Dice, and now Forsaken Frontiers. Actually, I have played a little bit of Pokemon here and there. I am a little bit of a Pokemon Showdown fan, which... Honestly, I should probably try making some more videos on. Like, uh, Pokemon videos don't take too much effort. I could just do like a random battler. Throw myself in the ring with Mr. Freeze-Eye himself. And get absolutely sauced. I don't think I'm gonna go for too much here. I think I just want to... Set weather here, maybe. This will spot you for, for your hubris, chef, handsome Austin. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I've been spited for saying something like that. Can't say it's out of my realm of experience. <laughs> maybe I don't go there. What the hell? I'm good. I'm taking this big bolt, and I'm leaving. I'm making sure I sell this big bolt, too. Just finish it, A. Hey. Some of my friends are pretty big fans of Outer Worlds, also. Wow. Oh, 
Oh wait, I have cozy lights. I don't have to worry too much about what happens when the lights go off. Maybe we just leave them off. Oh, I forgot which big bolt I was supposed to sell. Oopsie. I guess I'll just sell all the big bolts. So I learned recently that there's more than one way to cancel stormy weather um, in Lethal Company. The first and more well-known way is to leave a conductive piece of scrap on a moon. And then the lightning will just kind of target that piece of scrap for the rest of the run. The other way is to sell a conductive piece of scrap at, at, on your run. And I guess that works also. That's why I was saying I need to sell this big bolt because it was conducting lightning. I didn't leave it. I left the key instead. The key was also conducting lightning or electricity. But just to double, double check, I will also sell the big bolt. Because last time I thought I canceled lightning or stormy weather, it didn't happen. It was on my run, assurance run with Nico, and I was very confused about what had transpired. So I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to double cancel it if I can. The thing is, if I double cancel, will it uncancel itself? The real questions. Okay. Big rock. You know what I want to do more again? I want to start reading more again. Um, that's something that I was very good about doing when I first moved into my new place, but something that I've kind of dropped while trying to figure out what I want to do, like YouTube-wise. I, I like I like kind of like doing a self-audit every now and again, especially in times when you know the the direction that I want to take my life in becomes a little bit less clear, which happens quite a bit. Especially with like doing content creation and running my own thing like the like the, one of the benefits of working a nine to five job or a salary job is that I don't have to think too hard about you know like how I'm gonna support myself because I can just support myself by by cruising I have, but doing like YouTube I have to be a bit more active in how I'm approaching like my own survival and especially since I am actively avoiding going down the route of doing the nine to five and thinking less so making sure that i am doing something that aligns with how i want to lead my life is something that i think about very frequently it's actually something that i still thought about a lot when i was working my nine to five and stuff just not something that i felt pressured or anything to think too hard about because it you know, I could just kind of live my life regardless of how much stock I put into the, that line of thinking. But, um, I do want to get back into reading. That was just kind of like one of the biggest life advices that I've received ever. Like, reading is just good. Listening, that, that's why I started, I started reading and listening to podcasts a lot. And that helped me, you know, gather the energy to, to do YouTube and also just do the kind of crazy rigorous life schedules that I've done and I think I could use a bit more of that in my life again love reading light novels that's actually how I built up my reading habit again when I deci decided I wanted to start reading you know just because I'm a bit older I say older in quotation marks because people who are older than me will laugh at that uh, statement um doesn't mean that I like I'm obligated or even skilled enough to be reading books that I'm quote unquote supposed to be able to read at my age. Like I think that's kind of just a, a bit of a fallacy. Like most people don't read outside of like you know the required reading of school. So how are you supposed to go from years of not reading when your last experience of reading was like back in college or whatever your last education level was? And then just jump directly into like, I don't know, crazy technical reading or like very deep and philosophical, insightful, etc. type reading that's a bit more advanced. I don't think that's like a realistic expectation. I still think it's worth trying. Like just because something is difficult doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. You can still get some value out of it. But the reason why I started with light novels is because I felt it was more practical for myself to enjoy the practice of reading first 
And then by enjoying the practice of reading and kind of getting back into the flow of things, it might be easier for me to digest something a bit more difficult later. And that proved to be kind of an effective strategy. Oh. Austin Yaps, he gets lost. Nothing new here. I'm gonna left hug, because I'm assuming that I right hugged to get this far. Oh, Jesus. Why do I feel like that's the direction that I have to go in, though? I'm gonna pretend like I don't have to go that way. At least for now. I don't think I can. I think I... I'm gonna have to start locking in, I think, because I think I'm getting too many uh, low value days now in a row. It's starting to worry me a little bit. Now there's a hoarding bug too. Okay. We're back at the apparatus room. You know what? I'm gonna pull the apparatus. Chef Lawson LC, never seen this happen ever. I know, it's kind of rare. So, the people who are here right now are kind of seeing history in the making. Chef Austin making a blunder. Actually, I'm a little worried that I pulled this now because if the hoarding bug decides to bother me here, he might want to steal um, this apparatus from me. And I kind of just have to give it to him if he does. I've never been lost once in my life. Not once, not ever. I don't know why anyone was even worried in the first place. <laughs> All that, just so I can upload an unlisted YouTube video for my friends. You know, I've said it many times, but the reason why I started uploading YouTube videos was so I can show stuff to my friends. And you know, I was just very excited to show them the things that I was doing in video games, or just excited to show them things that I can produce. And I think that's like a good energy to have going into like content creation or just any anything that you want to do. If I was only here, if I was motivated by money, then this would be a lot more of a stressful gig. But I'm not. Okay, well now, I, now I'm motivated by money, yeah, sure. Because I actually make money doing this now. But it's not the reason why I started. And I think that's important. <laughs> I have never been lost in Lethal Company in my entire life, and this run is just absolute proof of that. Fifty-four? Where was the other object? Oh. Okay. All of a sudden, it's not so bad. Old apparatus, instant regret. Yeah, I didn't think about the hoarding bug interaction. You know. I realized that when, when hoarding bugs are kind of like right up on you, when you're holding something, it's because they want what you're holding. I can't believe it took me almost 500 hours in this game to realize that that was part of their of their function and for a long time I was wondering why hoarding bugs would attack me randomly but now I know that they actually just want the loot that I'm holding and that they'll attack me if I don't give it to them and now I dislike hoarding bugs even more <laughs> and you know now we have a hoarding bug event that spawns all of them onto the map. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Chef never lies. It's not it's not part of my character, man. It just isn't. <laughs> um I don't care how cute something is. If it's dangerous, it's dangerous. If it's a threat, 
If it's a threat to my life and my run, I will treat it as such. People, people who can't deal with hoarding bugs accordingly because they think they're cute are the kinds of sailors who would be drawn in by the sirens over out on the sea. That's not me. I kill tulip snakes too. I just do. <laughs> Gotta look out for number one. It's more like if a hoarding bug starts taking loot somewhere deeper into the facility. Like, that's not really very cool. Hoarding bugs are pretty easy to kill when you have the means to kill them. <laughs> I've lost a lot of runs by not having the means to kill a hoarding bug. Unfortunately. And being impatient. But I could also just dodge them, too, if they aggro. But me running around with no... <laughs> walking around with no stamina in the facility does not... is not a good thing. And that's, I guess that's not a hoarding bug exclusive issue. But it's something that I think about. The cops are out to get me now. Because they heard that I kill hoarding bugs. Apparently it's a crime around these parts. Someone's going to unsubscribe to me on YouTube when they hear me say that. Like how could you? How dare you even? That's me, I got the audacity to do a lot of things. Let's sell all the big bolts first. Just really make sure that we cancel stormy weather. I guess that's the other, the fourth factor that could end my run. RNG lightning. One of the most diff like dangerous encounters in the game. The only thing you can do to avoid RNG lightning is straight up skip stormy days altogether. That is your only course of action. To have a 0% chance to not die from RNG lightning. And even then, depending on where you're standing on the ship, you might get RNG lightninged out of the sky. That's never happened to me before. But there is a reason why on stormy weather, I do not stand along this wall, even while landing. Because if lightning lands right here, you will get hit by the AoE lightning, and depending on how close you were and how close that lightning was, you can and you will die. I don't make the rules. I just have to abide by them sometimes. I have died to this. I have died to lightning standing too close to this wall, inside the ship. It's just knowledge that I have now, unfortunately. Never died to RNG lightning, but I watched a friend die to it right in front of me. I need you in these lobbies to offset Nico's RNG, maybe. <laughs> I have been RNG lightning quite a few times. And just as I think I'm safe, I get RNG lightning again. <laughs> it is not cool. It is very funny content-wise, though. 147 is what I need. Oh, you're talking about loot bugs are the east. Oh, walls and lethal company are more of a suggestion. Right. <laughs> Apparently. I've also been struck by lightning indoors. Not in vanilla, but in modded. So, whenever I'm playing modded lethal company and it's stormy weather outside, and I hear lightning conducting on an item indoors, I'm very wary of it until I, can, until I see for myself that indoor lightning is not going to be a thing for the run. It's just something that I'm prepared for. Indoor lightning is very rare and modded nowadays with how, like, fleshed out modded Lethal Company is now. But there is still a non-0% chance that, a, that, like, I will get struck by lightning in modded. It's just something that I'm aware of. <laughs> and keep in mind. Both Nico and I have early Lethal Company videos of people dying to indoor lightning. It's very funny. I would be very sad if it happened on my... Uh, high quota runs. Okay. This might be the first- okay. We keep buying stuff, I think. I mean, I could buy a jetpack here. I'm not going to. We're gonna buy a shower. We're gonna buy a disco ball. 
for the first. Oh shit. Can I turn this off though? No, wait, don't. Okay. Okay. I, the reason why I'm hiding that is because I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna get demonetized for, for sending that song. So, <laughs> as groovy of a tune as it is, I don't know if I can be having it play. Can you turn the disco ball off though, by the way? Like when it when it's out? Or do you have to leave it leave it on? Do you guys know? I don't. I can't buy I mean I can buy a cruiser. I can buy a belt bag. Wait, let me buy a belt bag. Let me buy a shovel. Buy some stuns. I'll buy two TZP. Almost forgot to use a belt bag. We're going, we're now going into quota five with some gear. Finally. Did I only buy one TCP? That's not... Oh no, I picked both of them up already. I got so invested in buying furniture that I forgot to buy, you know, the essentials. But I also haven't really needed them yet. I still haven't gotten the hoarding bug event. This... But it's cool. I keep tabbing, trying to open the belt bag, and that's like some Forsaken Frontiers muscle memory. It's like I'm pulling up the data deck, but it's left mouse button to open this. Okay, let's see if I get what, what my quota looks like now. Quota 5. 647. I feel like that's a super low roll. I feel like that's a super, super low roll. So may maybe the furniture is helping out here. Rainy, just don't fall into a puddle and you'll be okay. Well, that's either a max roll or I have beehives somewhere. I have beehives, I can see them already. I have to make sure I don't fall into a puddle. So, key areas are right around here. I like checking my key areas, like this drop zone. No puddles to worry about. I'm good. There's a, both beehives right here. There's a puddle right here. I can go around, though. 88. Not great, but still pretty decent. <laughs> Slight oversight. I'm gonna have to run from the front. My run flashed before my eyes. <laughs> that that run flashed before my eyes, I am not gonna lie. I feel like I should have lost the run there. I'm just very glad that I didn't. I can be a gamer sometimes. I didn't check over here if there weren't any puddles. I probably should have. Okay. Just make sure I don't hit a puddle getting the second one. Where even was this? I see. Is there another puddle over here? I can. I feel like I can just go wide over here. It doesn't look like it's on top of a puddle, so I should be okay.
I didn't remember if there was a puddle over here or not, which is why I ran straight. It looks like we're good over here. Yeah. Hopefully the amount of damage I took and that I'm about to take isn't going to affect my success on the run. It does mean that I'm going to get one shot by spiders now. But I mean, the way I've been playing against spiders, you know, I just don't take that risk. Take our handy dandy belt bag. Make sure I don't jump into a puddle right here. Puddle right there. I don't think there's a puddle in front of this ladder. Okay. I'm gonna go... I don't plan on staying here for very long because I'm injured, so I'm gonna go to main first. Bring a stun grenade at least. Saw a flash of red over here. I wasn't sure if it was going to be the fire exit, but looks like it is. But yeah, definitely not going to stick around for too long. Turns out restarting your stream did fix it. I'm glad. I didn't even restart OBS, so... Must... Must have just been like a connection. I don't, I don't know what it was. I'm just glad that it worked. <laughs> I couldn't tell you the technical know-how about why restarting stuff works, but you know. The good old turn it off and turn it back on again tech it seems to be pretty reliable. Battered metal. Key. I do have a belt bag, so... One quick, quick look over this way. There's a turret. First turret of the run. And I'm just not going to deal with that. We are just going to go. I'm, I don't know what health I'm at right now. Bees do 10, dam two, uh, two, 10 damage per tick. So if I've been hit five times by bees so far, one bullet of a turret will kill me because one one bullet does 50 damage so that's just not a risk that I'm going to take because what if there's another turret behind that one and I just get real unlucky normally you can tank one bullet but I don't have that luxury right now so I'm not going to uh, do that right now I mean we, ha we have some loot we have some beehives Let's just, let's just run it. I could use the TZP, but I think I have time to not have to use it right now. I would rather save the TZP in times of need. And this is not one of those. This is not what that is. I also plan on taking at least 20 more ticks of damage when collecting those beehives in the back. So any extra turret damage would not be helpful at this time. Because even if I survived and went to critical, and my health went back up to 25, I would only be able to afford to take two ticks of B damage. And, um... Yeah, I'm not confident that I'll only take two ticks of B damage in my B hive retrieval, so... I would like to have some health before going back. I plan to be streaming in the morning in the near future, by the way. It's more just like when I'm up. I think ideally I would stream in the morning, actually. Because streaming in the evening is starting to become a little less ideal for me. But it's just a matter of if I actually wake up in the morning, too. It's gonna... I'm, a, I'm still kind of figuring out what my, like, editing and streaming schedule is going to look like. 
now, especially now that I'll be focusing on Forsaken Frontier stuff. Like, especially this week and the next. It's very high priority for me to get as many guides out for Forsaken Frontiers as possible. Because I think guides are going to be very useful to people right now. Like, that's literally what I'm going to work on as soon as my stream is over. I'm going to wor be working on the monster guide for Forsaken Frontiers. Um, and I'm glad that I actually waited a little bit because I was shared some information that I didn't know about. Like, for example, I thought that the Ventress was the only enemy that didn't spawn at the beginning of the day. Like, the Ventress has different spawn times depending on which map you're on. But it turns out Shamblers don't don't spawn at the beginning of the day either. And that's something that I didn't know. I thought every enemy except the Ventress spawned right away. Because it felt that way. But then I saw Maylene's message in the Discord saying that not, not every enemy spawns in all at once. And I was like, really? That feels like Cap. But then when she said it was a Shambler, I was like, okay, well... I haven't really seen instant Shamblers since the playtest. And it, even during the playtest, it was only like once. And it was also a bug to Shambler at the same time, so... Yeah. But yes, I'm not opposed to morning streams. I think it might even be the better time for me to stream than in the evening. So... I do... I can't say when I plan on doing it, but it is in the realm of possibility. Could share the info you're, you've been playing by. That would be cool. That would be cool. May maybe I'm missing something too. Cosmo has also shared like what he has in store, but I, like any other perspectives are welcome as well. I thought I had enough help. I thought I could tank that. I thought I could tank it. That's my bad. <laughs> I thought I could tank it. That is absolutely my fault. Holy. Well, I just got to do it again, it seems. 